Greetings and welcome to the Antico Cafe Greco case, ACG. Want to uh, introduce the case to you, and then we're going to get after some uh, analysis uh, that hopefully are gonna, it's going to give you a great start. So this case is uh, fictional, but ACG is a real location. It's um, located at the near the, near the um, Spanish steppes in Rome. It's um, Italy's second oldest coffee bar <clears throat> and the third oldest in the world, opened in 1760. And it's uh, you know, had uh, many illustrious um, patrons over the years. It in fact has a very high rent and uh, you can see the menu for this uh, location. Um, lattes run 10 euros. The TripAdvisor reviews um, complain about the cost of coffee, but it's, you know, it's it's really, I mean, I think I visited this this, this place um, about uh, two years ago, and it's, um, it's not the coffee shop in the museum, it's the museum in the coffee shop. I think that's a, a good way of thinking about it. Um, so the, uh, the case deals with um, the operation, and uh, you can see where it's located here, if you're familiar with Rome, um, you've got the part, uh, the, uh, uh, the Pantheon here, Vatican City here, um, Colosseum should be here somewhere too, can't quite spot it, but um, um, in any case, there is Antico Cafe Greco, and you can, you know, plug, uh, there's the Colosseum down there, um, so you can plug this into Google Maps and, you know, explore. So uh, the way this place operates is, They've got three baristas using um, equipment that is that resembles, you know, some sort of historical coffee machine. And it's these uh, Venus Arduino coffee makers, and they're you purchase them um, new, um, but they appeal to that sort of uh, to an, a, another time period. So the way this uh, operation works is orders arrive from all of the customers in the establishment at the rate of 105 per hour. These are orders for um, espresso beverages. We're only going to focus on you know one type of beverage, although ACG in fact um, produces many different uh, or serves many kinds of beverage and um, and other goods. But we're focusing just on their espresso beverages now, and uh, these orders arrive at, a, at the rate of 105 in a pooled queue. Um, this is, uh, you know, orders launched from folks' cell phone, from QR, using a QR code, and uh, the underlying software would be uh, Emojots uh, to support how, you know, just support the queue. And baristas then pull these orders off the head of the queue and, and make the coffee and serve them. Right. So um, these baristas serve at the rate of 55 per hour. Um, their service times are normally distributed with a mean of 65.45 seconds. That's equivalent to 55 per hour. Um, but it's, uh, you know, there's a standard deviation associated with these service times, and that's 10 uh, seconds per beverage. Now, these folks have all received advanced barista training at Mixology Academy, and you can think of them as seasoned experts. Uh, and according to TripAdvisor reviews, um, you know, they're, they're doing a fair job on food quality and service at four stars out of five. The, um, the training is uh, elevated and it gives them a sense of operational awareness, leadership, um, and artistic sophistication that, um, that allows them to reduce their standard deviation uh, of their processing times by 90%. So there would have been 100 seconds standard deviation absent the training. Um, it's down to 10 seconds. A lot of that is just sort of time management and attention to detail and so forth that allows them to get that time down, but also, um, you know, practicing the routine and getting that kind of thing down. Um, so it's down to 10 seconds with this training. But the training takes 50 hours, spread over 10 weeks, costs 26, uh, 2,600 euro 2650 euro a, a person and acg co uh, covers this cost so that one of the questions we're going to have is you know is are they getting value for money um, with this training they are getting the, redu the reduction in the um, send deviation um, and there could be some other you know soft benefits but uh, the, the only uh, direct hard benefit uh, operationally is the reduction in the standard deviation 
All right. Um, because of this training, they're at risk of being poached um, or leaving to start their own cafe. No data available on that uh, concern, unfortunately. Um, the demographics uh, primarily sightseeing tourists who have come down the Spanish steps. Um, if you look at the um, Google data on this, you can see that their prime time is around 11 o'clock to 6 o'clock. They, they open at 9.30. I think they close around 8. Um, and you can get this for each day of the week. Um, it varies, of course. Um, some days are heavier than others, um, just depending on seasons and, um, and, and day of week and so forth. So questions here. Uh, okay, so the the, the demographic there uh, there is um, the site this tourist demographic. There are also some locals, but not many because it's very pricey. So you know, once you've seen the museum a couple times, um, you know, and explored it, it loses its appeal because of the price. So not too many locals, um, but there are some luxury establishments uh, around this cafe. And uh, you've got a list here, Balenciaga, Bulgari, Cartier, Hermes, Chun, and uh, this um, an ACG featured in uh, House of Gucci, uh, um, I think it was like 2021 or something, the movie. Um, so there are some shoppers who are, you know, going to the coffee shop after or before um, visiting their favorite uh, retail shopping, luxury shopping. Okay, so some of the questions that we have is, you know, is this well run? You know, are the is the number of baristas correct? Um, should we they continue to use these Venus Arduinos, or should we uh, switch those out for something automated? The Venus Arduinos, incidentally, are semi-automated, um, but they could be switched out for automated alternatives. Um, then, you know, is that barista training worth it? Uh, ACG is paying twenty six fifty, you know, to get those folks trained. Uh, it elevates their risk of leaving. Um, it does reduce their standard deviation significantly. Um, is that the you know, value for money uh, there? Um, and then um, there's this this pooling of orders. Uh, is that something we should continue to do, or should we perhaps um, allocate baristas parts of the cafe that they serve? Let's say you know you have three service zones, and you assign each barista to um, a service zone. And uh, what you could assume then is that orders are coming out each of the out of each of those zones at the rate of thirty five per hour instead of one hundred five per hour for the whole establishment, and uh, each barista is then sort of on uh, on her own or on his own with regard to service. Is that something we should consider? All right. So um, what I'm going to try and uh, lead you through is um, you know some analysis using queuing and uh, simulation, this is going to be our first exposure or a project using both of these tools. Um, you can decide which one you want to use. You can use both. Um, hopefully we're going to get these results to line up, the analysis to line up for both, both of these tools um, and then uh, make a recommendation as to what changes, if any, ACG should uh, implement. So uh, the first thing to do here would be to consider, you know, the number of baristas. Um, they've got three. Uh, do they need four? Is three is, is three okay? Maybe they should go to two. Uh, and uh, I suggest uh, investigating things like this. Then the, the um, utilization and the expected waiting time in system um, to make your argument with regard to the number of baristas. Then. Um, what about this pooling idea? Is that a smart move or, you know, should we allocate those zones for service to each of these baristas and have them sort of become independent? Uh, another possibility is um, that we, you know, end the training, uh, reduces the risk of them leaving. It does elevate their standard deviation. I mean, those folks who are trained, of course, would stick around for some time. You get the benefit of that standard deviation reduction, but eventually everybody leaves, right? And then you'd have noobs come in and uh, they would be uh, having a standard deviation of 100 seconds as opposed to 10 seconds for the trained folks. So is that something, um, you know, we'd save the 2650 going forward. And then uh, what about switching out those semi-automatic Victoria Arduino Venus bars um, for fully automatic uh, alternatives? The 
uh, processing rate would be the same. Um, and um, and but if you did that, you know, the baristas would just be able to basically press a button, and there would be no variation in the processing times. Okay, so you know, you're going to go through an exercise here, thinking about various scenarios, pricing them out in terms of utilization and waiting times. Uh, it's not really a cost exercise, although you could um, you could bring in costs, you could research the the average wage of a barista in Rome and use that to motivate your answer. Um, but overall, um, you're going to come up with a recommendation, and then um, what we want to do here is also sort of uh, answer these meta questions. You know, does utilization matter in this um, setting? Uh, does the pooling matter? Was that a good move to pool the orders? Uh, does that really have a big impact here? Um, and what about variance? That whole training issue. Um, you know, does the training really bring a lot of value? And then uh, a softer issue is the does psychology matter? Um, you know, we've got this possibility of um, implementing initiatives, uh, innovations, process innovations that reduce the perceived waiting time versus the actual waiting time. Um, and that could be, you know, various diversions, appealing to the history, uh, atmosphere of the place. Um, does that matter? Is that something we should pursue? Um, so with regard to uh, the, the tools that you can use, uh, firstly, just note that you should make and document any assumptions you deem necessary. You're free to um, you know, consult any resources that uh, you think are appropriate. Um, pull data from salary.com or any other salary site to understand what costs look like for this establishment. Um, and then with regard to the tools, we've got these three tools. Really, it's going to be the GGK calculator that I'm going to demonstrate. Um, but I did just list the other two because you could use them for some scenarios. And then we've got a, an any logic model. And I'm going to you know, give you a, a video walkthrough on that. So we can get the model. And um, you should be using, I think, uh, for this iteration, at least version 8.9, I think, uh, of any logic. Um, if you install that from their site, you should get the latest version. And then um, hopefully you've accessed this video from this YouTube playlist. Um, what are we looking for in terms of a deliverable? Well, you can go, uh, go it alone on this, or you can write a group report. Whatever the case, we're looking for a report that has a bluff. Uh, that is your basic recommendation, very crisp, with uh, maybe a KPI or two, an overall KPI. And then that's, that'll be your sort of introduction, your, your thesis statement. And then you'll have a, a section that deals with your analysis and then just wrap it up with a conclusion that essentially recites your, your um, recommendation, but then also uh, uh, gives some, you know, explains why you're going there. So in other words, it connects the analysis to the to the recommendation. So um, four pages, maximum four pages, you can write less. Single spaced 12 point times new Roman font with one inch margins. Um, we wanna know who did what if you do write a group report and uh, you earn the rest of the formatting decisions. And uh, we're looking for a little bit of magic here. 